The Urban Shield is, is an amazing event, it really is. 100% of the scenarios are based some way in reality of something that's already happened. Marsh, load up. The training that we're getting to deal with terrorism is preparing us for whatever happens. The gates where? The gates about top. See the gate kind of sticking out? Straight down about 20 yards past yeah. it. Okay, move up to the move up to the gate. The corner? The corner. All right, move to the corner. Ready? Yeah. Tony, we're gonna move up to the corner. I mean, you're competing against pretty much the best of the best, FBI, Israeli Special Forces, other big metropolitan police departments. It is a competition, but it's primarily a training exercise. Okay. Move up to the gate. But stay low. Hold on, we're gonna move up. We're gonna move up to the gate three at a time, staying low. It's just a good idea to really get that training foundation. If we were to go on an entry tomorrow, and in the back of your mind you're thinking, take an extra second. Take a pause, make sure you're doing this right. Then I think Urban Shield is a success. Okay, Myers, I want you to low crawl, do that curb to the left, see if you can see anything up in front. Once we stand up, we gotta move. Main door on the one side with the camera on it. Got the pickup on the uh, number four side. Uh, no one in sight right now. Hey, Tony? Yeah. There's a wall in front of Myers. It's a solid wall. Myself, Myers, and Robert are gonna take that wall and cover the number one, two corner. And the rest of the team can come up and cover the three, uh, the one four corner. Okay, I got it. I got a subject on the number four side by the pickup. Well, Myers, can we move up to that corner without being compromised? And negative, he's by the pickup. He's going to see on the approach. Okay, let's just take it hard and aggressive. Copy. On me. Ready? Ready? Move. Let's go. Oh, put it right. Got one with the rifle. It's going back. Hey, take it, take it. Remember the coverage. Up. Go around the propane tank. Got the Put your hands out the window. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands. Both of them. Let's see both of them. Come out. Turn around. Back up to the side of my boy. Keep backing up. Tony, we're holding the number uh, three side. Okay, we got four over here at the box truck. There, hold on those guys and clear the truck. Truck clear. Truck clear. Hold that corner. We're going to come down the number three side and clear the number three side. We'll let you know when we're at the uh, three four corner. Never. Okay, is that truck clear? Truck clear. Somebody copy me, my comms go down. We're copying, the truck's clear. 
and we have uh, Stankwitz posted on the three four corner. Now the four side's clear. We're holding on the three four corner. Okay, we're at the uh, the two four corner. See the see the hand. See the hand. Blue blue blue. Guys, done. Scenario over. Scenario over. Put him on safe. Let him hang. Given the way it unfolded, I don't really see how it could have gone any better. It looked really good. You guys did a, did a good yeah. job. Urban Shield is important on two levels. For one, it's important because it's a competition. Secondly, it's important because of the experience. I mean, it's 25 to 30 scenarios that we are getting um, able to compete in and go through in two days. We don't do that much training within a year. Even though it's a competition, you know, to the team for us, it's not really as much as a competition as training. You know, what are we getting out of it? Are we bringing our you know, we don't want to bring our training down to the lowest member. We want to bring the lowest member up to the highest training. Basically, you, you got to kind of trust that guy at the end of the line not to shoot you or not to get you in the arm or what have you. Um, and it it, it, it it builds that trust, and it there's a sonic boom that happens when a firearm is shot behind you. And if you've never experienced something like that, well, you don't. The first time you you don't want the first time you experience that to be a call out. You need to have already had that experience uh, before you actually on a real job. Um, so that's an example. And it's interesting because depending on where you are in the line, whether you're in front of the line or your back of the line, it's it's different. You It sounds different. It feels different when it goes by you. So it's, it's really a quite interesting drill. Scout team has reported back that the best avenue approach, if we're in this general or area, because this is all underground, uh, there's some shrubbery here. We're going to work around the perimeter here. This is the guard shack. We're going to come around to the high side. We're going to come around to the west side of the guard shack and come back towards our entry point. Remember, 360 degree coverage. Take the door. Swat two, take the door. Here, we're at the door. Tony, I got the rear. Okay, reachers up. Take it. Oh, you got the lead element. 
the, the uh, suspect's got no info for us. Okay, one stayed there for the rear cover, and one stayed with the bag. What do you got, Robert? It looks pretty clear all the way down, and there's more light down there, so uh, we got about a 30 yard hike to the light. Okay, I want you and Robert, you and Myers, to go just past that light that's above you, get past the light, and hunker down, and then we'll start bounding up to you. We're coming to you. Robert, anything? We got a booby trap right in front of the uh, Myers. Myers is going to mark it with chem light. Copy. Tony, you copy that booby trap about 20 yards ahead. We're going to mark it with a chem light. Hey, can you guys hear somebody yelling up at Calling for help? Yeah, that way he can make sure nobody hits it. Al, there's a faint voice, somebody yelling for help, way down there. Okay, Myers, I want you to stay with the uh, booby trap. We're gonna go by you so you can mark it and let us know where it's at, okay? Okay, the booby trap, according to Myers, is pretty high, so maybe it's a uh, knee deep, knee height. Copy. that barricade to the left, go up to that barricade to the left. Hold. She's going to go shoot. Fired up. We're just gonna keep moving, charge on, okay? Remember, if it goes active, shooter taken on. Okay, move, 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 active shooter. Take it on. Move, 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 double time. Watch for booby traps still. Cover long still. Next, guys, we're done. SWAT takes everything that I enjoy about law enforcement and ratchets it up about a thousand percent. The first year or so, it's pretty much, you know, you try and, you know, just be like, you know, not visible, you know, just kind of be a sponge and absorb everything and, uh, and then after you've been on for a little longer, then you know, then the camaraderie and everything really builds together, and uh, it's like a, it's like a family. You know, your SWAT operators, those are your brothers, and you know, you probably hear it a lot. It's like, oh, I would take a bullet. You know, it's like, well, you would. Some of my best memories of SWAT are not necessarily uh, callouts or trainings. You know, they're. Um, they're just, you know, hanging out with the guys. Once a month, like for two or three days, we go away as a team out of the county to do some training. But that night, we have what's called a round table. And in this round table, it's our opportunity. It's just a team in there, and it's an opportunity to talk about issues that came up during that year. If somebody on the team has an issue with somebody else, this is the forum that it's going to come out. You know, somebody may call you out. Um, if somebody had personal issues uh, during the year and they were skipping training or um, they were getting a divorce or whatever issues they had, this is that form that we would all talk about it. You know, guys get emotional during this roundtable, and I think that brings us closer. I don't know of uh, any other teams that, that do this, or if they do, they don't talk about it. 
Um, this is the first time I'm talking about it outside of the team. Our main entry point is going to be the first door we come up on. Grosso is going to be the breacher. We have our stacking order. SWAT 1 is going to be up front. If for some reason we can't get through this door, our secondary breach point is going to be door number 2. Our rally point is going to be right back here. We will kill one hostage every five minutes. OK, let's stack up. You did not meet our demands. No, don't shoot me, please. OK, let's stack up right here, Robert. Let's stack up. We're moving. Doors open, doors open. Shots fired from that open door. Okay, we're gonna disable the train now. Make entry, make entry. the upper floor we're taking the stairs at our entry point okay when the last passenger is off on the upper level I want a detailed search of any jackpots or bingos on the upper level copy all right now we're walking out back towards our uh, rally point hey we got this other part of the car Taser, 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 taser. Get closer. Get on him, get on him so we can cuff him. SWAT 2 from SWAT 1. We just encountered another suspect on the second level. He is tased and in custody. Got a device with a timer. Avalanche, avalanche, avalanche. So we all know what we're getting into. You know, it's tough sometimes, but uh, it, I think it's important work what we do. I mean, every time you put on a badge or hop in your patrol car or walk through the front door of the jail, uh, there's risk involved. You do decide to take that risk when you raise your hand and take the oath uh, to become an officer or a deputy. You're compounding that when you choose to get on a SWAT team, you go one step further because when, it, when the incident is beyond the scope of what patrol can handle, then the SWAT team is called out. Something bad's happening, everyone's running away. You need to go in there. You need to do something. Cops can't turn and run. You, know, you need to be prepared for anything. Um, and that's why, you know, a lot of people, when they see car, guys go up to, you know, officers go up to a car, it doesn't matter who's driving the car, they just have to be, it has to be the same every time. They have to be thinking the worst can happen. And, it, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time it doesn't. But it's that small percentage. Fired. 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 In this scenario, it was held in a, a gymnasium in Hayward at a school. They did an explosive breach on the door. Um, in the incident in Beslan, they had booby traps. Um, they simulated the same booby traps here, but 
we didn't think about the booby traps we made entry because we were so jacked up and we wanted to like you know save the screaming kids that were inside <clears throat> our eight man team went in and two of us came out and you know afterwards we talked about it we were like you know if something like this really happened we're going to lose half of our team more than half of our team and that's pretty big i mean that's you know i think the biggest what happened in oakland when they lost two SWAT officers i mean that was a big deal to lose six in in one incident is is unthinkable but something like this if it happened here makes you think about it Okay, Kenny, come with me. It's just us. Who's that, who else is over there? Tony, what's your status? We have two SWAT operators are down 1055. I have the book and I have the uh, front to a uh, rocket. Secure his weapon. Secure his weapon. Okay, is he search? Okay, we're going to hand him off to patrol units outside. Okay, bring him down. I'm with you now, Al. Okay, Tony, it's just us. This is clear. Gymnasium is up top, okay? Yep. Okay, run. Work your way up the stairs. Hey, just yeah. FYI, we're down to six. We're down to six, okay? Minute. Ready, 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 move. The timer's at six minutes. Timer is at six minutes. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Get your hands up. Let me see your hands. What's on this side? Clear. We're down. Hands behind your back. Roll over. Sit up. Over here. Put your hands behind your back. Who was in the back? I was. Saying somebody said, look down, look down somewhere. Somebody said that, but failed to control the team. You guys went out fast, nasty. Nice Saw the book. Did anybody see the law rocket before you saw the book? Probably right there. Should have. Okay, hold on. This is weird. There's a law rocket here. Um, and then once they went down, it took you a little bit longer than I would have liked. They're blown up. After that, I think you guys put it online well and controlled the situation until you got back to that Claymore. You guys fight it out. I mean, it looked like how they got it. You know? My eyes were on her. I didn't look down. I was, I was focused yeah, I on her. Everyone. Yeah. Movie yeah. Hey, you know what, though? Something like this, we're probably going to take casualties. 
so I have an agreement with my ex-wife that if there's a if there's a call out that happens during work time and uh, it's my week to have my son, um, that she'll pick him up at school. Um, so uh, that happened recently where there was a call out during the day and uh, she had to go pick him up at school and she you know she told him daddy had to go do you know SWAT work and my son is uh, eight years old he's going to be nine here very soon, um, and this only happened a few months ago so. Uh, he understands what that means. He understands what, you know, what daddy does and what SWAT means. And, you know, he, I, I don't hide any of that from him. Um, but I, I had no idea how scared he got when, when I actually had to go, uh, go on a call out. I had no idea. Um, and my son is, uh, my son's adopted. He was, uh, we adopted him from, uh, from Ghana in West Africa when he was, uh, well, we got him home when he was four years old, but we adopted him when he was three. Um, and for a little boy his age, he's seen a significant amount, uh, a significant amount of abandonment. Um, so, uh, after that particular call out, it was my time to have my my uh, my son. So after the call out was done, he slept at his mom's house that night. The next day, I picked him up at school. We were home after school, and I think we were doing homework or something. And um, I don't remember how it got brought up. The uh, the uh, call out got brought up. But he um, he started crying, and I was kind of shocked. I was like, you know, what's the matter, bud? And he said. Um, you know, I'm scared you're going to get killed. Use those words. And, uh, you know, as a, as a father and as a parent, I just thought to myself, how, how is it I, I didn't realize this? You know, how, 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 how did I not understand that this is how we felt? Um, so, you know, that was really difficult to hear. And um, I knew that I had to make a decision. And it wasn't... It, it was an extremely difficult decision. Or maybe I should say it was an, an extremely difficult process. I knew the decision I had to make. You know, there was no way I was going to cause my son that kind of pain. Um, but the process of actually, you know, having to resign was extremely difficult, much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Uh, in law enforcement, it's the family that's sacrificing at home. They're doing a lot of extra work themselves. The significant others at home are fulfilling the role of two parents. So it's not just what we're doing, it's what's done at home also. Telling Jackson, you know, I have to go to training or, you know, we have a call out. Um, you know, and it, it never seems to be in the middle of your days on. It's always your first day off or, you know... Um, you know, a Saturday afternoon when you guys were supposed to go to the park or, you know, he loves playing miniature golf, so we go do that. Sometimes it's not a balancing act. Sometimes one side wins out over the other. And uh, for a good portion of my career, it's been work that's won out over family life. Um, looking back on it now, could I have done a better job? Yeah, did I miss a lot of things? I, I did. A lot of the guys in the team are, are divorced. I'm one of them. And uh, it sucks, but I again, I always thought I was going to be exempt from that uh, from that one, but it didn't happen that way. It didn't turn out. So know what's expected of you going into it. Family is first, but work is a close second, a very close second. It just has to be that way. We get the SWAT calls. It's like, okay, it's this is what we've been training for. We're going to help out a situation, make a situation better. It's uncommon in law enforcement in general that you're you're going to discharge your weapon. When when you get called out as a SWAT operator, that's because it's beyond the capability of the, the patrol division to handle. Things are bad, you know. There's some real bad guys, and usually that you know that means there's guns involved. So the likelihood certainly increases. Okay, Saints. We want you to stay here. We're going to move by you. Just don't move because any hostages or, or suspects, we're going to bring them back to you. This is going to be our containment area. Okay? Once we come back here and this thing is settled and done, we need to keep brief on. I need a number of how many hostages and suspects that we have. Okay? So hang out here. Get on the ground. 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 Get
Walk towards me. On your knees. Hands and knees. Come towards me. Come on. Stand up. Thank God you're here. On your outside. I need to get out of here. Come to me. I got her. All right. Oh, but this way. This way. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Can I leave? All right. Hands oh behind God. your back. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. There you go. Now what's over there? Oh, we're going to hold here. Myers Island coming out. Okay, move on up to the, to the left, to the left. Come in here, squeeze in here. Is he down? Okay, cuff him. Mark this room. Get one suspect you, got a chem light? you got a chem light? Mark it so we know the suspect's in here and he's down. I want, I want that chem light marked right outside the door. We're on okay? hold down on this room. Okay. We'll wait. Stand by. Put it right out here so we know. Hey, Tony, we're going to mark this room on the outside with a chem light. We got one suspect, 1055. Okay, make sure to cuff them, separate them from the women. We're moving, Tony. Hold that hallway. Hold that hallway. Back up on Tony. Swap two. Swap one with me. Okay, we've got an open courtroom on the right side. Go ahead and take off. Hold that right. Clear the, clear the, clear the back. Clear the back. One, one, two. Go ahead. Okay, we got four in this room. Two tangos. Two uh, possible hostages. Can you mark that room, Tony, with the chem light? Stick it outside the door. I got it. Yeah, He's cut. What's your name? Ronnie. 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 Randy. Ronnie. Ronnie. We got two live hostages. We're going to bring them out. Start walking them back to the other deputy. Okay, we got two hostages here. We're going to bring them back to the deputy. We'll meet you down the hallway. We got one suspect, 1055. We're going to mark this room with the chem light. This face is walking. Yeah. We'll keep an interconnecting. We'll keep somebody posted okay. here, covered long. How many, uh, many suspects you got down in there? Two suspects. You got two suspects? Two hostages. Two suspects. I'm not worried about the hostages. I'll wait till we get down I there. I understand. Lady says she's uh, one of the county board members. She says there's one more janitor missing by the name of Norm wearing a blue shirt like that one. But Mel said it, right? Hmm? A man? What's her ID card yeah. say? Norm? Yeah, Norm. Well, it says Norm. So she, Norm is probably locked up somewhere. This is who we look for, we need to find. Yeah, I thought I saw back on the, uh, the bathroom camera. Yeah. Sitting down? Hey, Al, this uh, witness here says Norm is probably sitting down in one of the bathrooms. It might be your tent. First tent, five, five.
first guy in the bathroom. Did he have a gun on him when you guys engaged him? Yeah, I thought he was reaching for the radio. I thought that was a gun. Uh, reaching for his radio. Okay, we found him. Captain, we're up. We're done. Just want to make sure we found him. We, we're done. I went in and kind of came up on him quick. He had his hands up like this, and I thought it was a, it was a turned out it was a radio on the shelf, and I lit him up. You know, nothing ever goes 100% perfect, and you know what? You learned something today. You know, it just, it's just, it's one of those things. It just happens. So hopefully you take, you guys come here, you take something back with you, and it's all a learning experience, and that's what it's all about. So, so, it, so it happened. The two things that we said that's going to kill us, killed us okay that's my bad. And i'm just saying i know I'm, no, we're, we're going to put it behind us that's one play it's done it's over let's just learn from it he or i didn't take the extra second hey, hey, that i should it's, it's okay it's done it's done here's the deal here's the deal yeah there's you're, you're making decisions in milliseconds um and that's realistic and that's what's going to happen on a call out just even just being a competition or a scenario like that it, i think it still it bothers you because well first of all you let the team down second of all if it had been real life, you'd be done, you know. How do you justify shooting a hostage or a victim? It's a lesson learned. And that's the beauty of, of these training exercises. You don't get a second chance when you're out in an op. Those sort of eye openers need to happen in a training environment because real world, that is not very good. This doesn't fly. You'll end up uh, in jail yourself. Well, I mean, if something were to happen in real life and you accidentally hurt somebody that, you know, a friendly or, a, you know, an innocent civilian. Um, I don't know. I can't even begin to kind of imagine how I would feel. Um, I can deal with a mistake that I make that gets myself hurt, but I would have a hard time dealing with a mistake that I made that got somebody else hurt. And I believe that everybody else in the SWAT team feels the same way. I don't think I've ever thought about it if I, if I accidentally shot somebody. Um, because my thinking was it's just never going to happen. Um, but I'm not saying that, it, you know, I'm invincible and it's not going to happen. It's just, I just never, I've never gone there. Um, but obviously it's devastating to the, to the victim and to the, the operator. Uh, it's something that you, you never you never want to have happen. It's just, it's just devastating all the way around. Approximately 60 minutes ago, Coast Guard Sector San Francisco received multiple 911 calls from passengers and crew members aboard the motor vessel Gemini. Witnesses aboard the vessel have reported shots fired by multiple suspects, although the exact number of shooters is unclear. There are reports of casualties aboard. One suspect was reported to have entered the bridge and may be operating the vessel. Your mission is to board the Gemini, identify and neutralize all threats, and prepare passengers for evacuation. When all threats have been neutralized and positive control of the vessel has been established, you will, ra you will radio the Coast Guard to signal all clear with follow-on forces. Suspects down, and we're counting passengers now. Okay, port side. It, there's a suspect in the engine room, port side. Copy, Tony. Copy. That will be the left side. Your left. Okay, Kenny. Frank Allen Drake going down on the right. Come over room. here. Hold here. Just hold here. Hold, hold on, all of them. Go back. See if they need help. Just hold those people. Watch them. There's Allen coming down to you. Okay, I got one coming out to the back deck. He's going to go down to the engine room. Okay, Tony, the bridge is secure. 
Grosso and I are holding the bridge. We're, we're in the captain is secure. LZ from Myers. Alan and I are going to take the left side engine room. Okay, I'm holding it on the interior with Stenquist. We have two down and multiple passengers. Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Come back towards me! Come back towards me! Let me see your hands! Hands! Turn around, get down on the ground, or down on your knees! Down on your knees! Hands on your back! Myers, Amen, what's your status? Full crew member here. We're code four. Okay, is he 1055 or is he alive? Crew member is alive. Okay, everybody down there, I need you to come up. We'll come up and we'll rally at the passenger area. The great majority of police officers have extremely high moral standards, and they are in this for the right reasons. They're in it to help people. They're willing literally to lay down their lives for the same public that doesn't trust them. It takes a unique kind of person to do that. Grosso, Els from Elsie. Go to Grosso. Bring the captain down to the passenger area. Copy, moving. I think in order to be a good cop, you really have to enjoy the work. You have to enjoy helping people. You have to really have a strong uh, sense of morality of right and wrong. You need to be compassionate to do this job. OK, fellas, index, index, end of exercise. You know, there's a lot of people that get in trouble that are inherently good people, that they just need, they need the right direction. And I, I think, you know, a lot of the good cops I've always worked with just knew how to talk to people, got them in the right direction. Tell cops, use your words. Your words can have a huge effect on people. 99% of the time, you use your words, it's gonna work. So that's, to me, the, probably the most powerful part of law enforcement. You may get 15 minutes, you know, maybe you're taking them to jail and they're in the back and they're, you know, dejected or caught or, but they, you know, you could tell some of them want to talk. Helping someone get through something, you know, it's gonna make them feel good, but it's also, it should make you feel good. I mean, that's really doing your job. Most cops would tell you that um, their best memories of the job are not, you know, they arrested some bad guy or they did this or that that was really exciting. They got in a pursuit or a shooting or what have you. Um, but the moments where they were actually able to uh, affect somebody's lives in a positive way, uh, those are the things that really stick out at the end of the day. And I think that's um, why we're in this job. And um, if that's not why another cop is in this job, I would, I would kind of question that. ground. Albert, what side? He's up high, top stairs. <clears throat> Go to the very top of the stairs, and we got him pinned down up by the lights. He's right there. He's on the corner. On the roof? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> SWAT 2 for SWAT 1. We have him pinned down on the roof. <clears throat> as soon as you guys get to the roof, and come across that catwalk. Yeah. He should be right there to the right. Copy. Okay, listen up. As soon as they go up and they engage him, we're gonna move, okay? All right. Okay, ready, ready. Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Move. Drop that weapon! Move, move, move. Get on the ground! 
Covering! Squad one, squad two. We have the rooftop sniper detained. Okay, we're moving. We're at the vehicles, we're out of here. Okay, if the principal's been evacuated, we're collapsing back to you. Okay, we're moving, we're on the move. Because there is that sense of um, public trust when we're handed the keys to a patrol car, handed a gun, handed a badge. Um, and if anything, there's a higher standard on law enforcement. And that's okay, because um, like I said, we are given a, a large amount of responsibility and we do have a duty to, uh, to keep up um, the public's trust in us. Unfortunately, there are bad cops and you know, like the old saying goes, you know, one bad apple will make the whole batch bad. Well, that's not true. One bad apple doesn't make the whole batch bad. I mean, there's a lot of good cops. And unfortunately, if uh, we can do a lot of good, but if there's that one bad, it just kind of tarnishes everything. Yeah, we'll acknowledge that there's a few out there that slip through the cracks, but name what career or profession that that doesn't happen. It, we're, we're humans. I do believe that if there is a bad cop, prosecute them to the extent of the law. There's millions of police officers, you know, all over the world, but especially in the United States, that are so good at what they do, and you're just not going to hear about it. It's frustrating sometimes when, you know, you're portrayed as this person with an agenda. Is there an agenda? No, there's not. I've never once sat in a locker room on a shift, someone saying, hey, I think I'm going to, you know, shoot somebody today, or I want to. It's the last thing anyone wants. It's my job to be the ambassador to combat what the media is portraying us to be and be that first line of defense. I can't impose my beliefs upon the public. I can only go out there and perform and earn their trust back through my, my actions. Well, I mean, we don't have our own PR campaign. Um, any PR we get is usually negative. So I think the only way to really combat that is your day-to-day -day relationships with the public, especially when you're at work, um, and also when you're off duty. The immediate future, unfortunately, I see it getting worse before it gets better. I don't think it's run its course yet. Um, I think the pendulum wants to swing back, but I don't think it's ready to swing back yet. Once we on grab the UC, we're going to bring the UC back here. Ten four. We're going to bring the UC back here. This is the safe zone, the rally point. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. I, have, I have a. It's a tanker a truck. Whiskey tank from Zulu. Truck, we got a visual truck. on a, like a, uh, a white tank tanker truck. truck. Five ton tanker five truck. Ton tank, uh, Copy that. And it looks like one it's of the pulling over to the number four side of the pump center, and I got one of the suspects rolling over. Now he is now out of my sight. Moving over to the passenger side of that vehicle, I believe. Stanquist and I. Got a driver I... getting out of the of the tanker, yeah. and he has a long. He gun. He has a long gun. He has a long gun. I, okay, uh, the subject have... suspect number two now has a long gun. He's moving. Okay, two long guns. I've got like two he's long getting, guns. He's getting the hose ready. All right. I've got, I've got a okay, third, the long gun went to the suspect. left. Okay, you guys watch out right. for the long gun. We have a compromised situation. Okay. Stand by for my command. Stand by. We got that long gun with the left. Execute, 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 execute. Oh. Over and cuff him. We got a dispersal. We got a dispersal. Dispersal. Amen. Let's grab him and move. Okay, you can 
Landslide, landslide. Landslide. Robert, landslide. Back to the rally point. Back to the rally point. Whiskey from Zulu. We had a dispersal. We evac. UC has been evac. Please confirm. Is the emergency shut off valve been turned off? Affirm emergency valve shut off. Has been inactivated. We're extracting. There's been a dispersal. just people we just regular people and I think um, the public doesn't get that we're fathers we're husbands we're brothers Cops are human, they raise families, they cry, all walks of life. They've taken an oath to you know, make their community better. I'm going to go out and I'm going to protect the community because I believe that people deserve to live their life peacefully. If I was a civilian or you know, a police officer and I was, you know, needed help somewhere, I would want guys like us to show up. You know, everybody loves a fireman, everybody hates a cop, but who's the first person they call when they can't handle something. Just know that there are good cops out there. Sometimes we may have to give you a ticket. It's not necessarily because we enjoy that. You know, we can't always be the good guys. If cops were always the good guys, then there would be a lot more crime going on. But there's a lot of hard-working men and women out there um, that are working hard to protect them. We are normal people, just like everybody else. We took on this job, some for different reasons, but at the end of the day, we're out there, and we're trying to make them safer. It's not an easy job, but it's, it's one that I enjoy, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs>